it's your girl. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's up, friends? The internet homegirl, Alexis Dominique, and oh my gosh, back at it again. Oh my gosh, back at it again with another video. And y'all, it has been. It's been a minute since I, you know, came on here, came on the cam and showed y'all what your girl was doing and what it was and what it was not. I don't even know what to look at. I'm looking up here, I'm supposed to be looking right here. Y'all, it's been a minute since I kicked it with you. So, what's up, what's popping? Thank you so much for joining me today. If you read about the title, you see that this is gonna be a life update and a Q&A. So, yesterday, last night on Instagram, I posted like a Q&A box for people to send me some questions and your girl got some pretty good questions. And also the Lord also gave me a few other questions for me to answer that he kind of was just leading me to talk about. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into it because I don't want this video to be super long, but we definitely gonna just flow and talk and speak and let it. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, share, tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend that it's time for, okay? So let's get into it. Okay, so um, the first question is that I'm going to talk about is where have I been? So we're gonna do the life update first. And where have I been? Y'all, I've been here, I've been there, I've been a little bit everywhere, I've been in the spirit, okay? Um, but seriously though, I have taken a minute off of YouTube. Um, I've taken a minute off of social media to be honest. And I've been kind of like posting here and there, but not like I was in the past where I was on this whole kick of posting on YouTube pretty frequently. Um, I was, you know, growing my social media. But I began to go, go through this season with God where he was trying to strip me of everything that was causing me to make me think that I was anything less than what he's called me to be. And social media in the season that I was in before I took this hiatus and came back, I was really comparing myself a lot um, to other people, um, comparing my walk with God a lot and things like that. And God needed to me to go, God needed for me to go through deliverance. He needed me to do some inner healing. He needed me to walk this thing out with him and come to the understanding and knowing of who I am in him before he can really put me on anybody's platform and be able to minister to people from a pure place. I don't wanna be um, you know, a servant leader who's leading and bleeding on people. I wanna be somebody who is, of course, not perfect now. We're not striving for, for perfectionism, and I'll find that in the name of Jesus. But I am wanting to come from a place where um, I can really minister from a place of healing. And so, um, yeah, so that's kinda like, a brief synopsis of where I've been and why I've been off of social media. Um, I was really going through that space in that season with God, but a lot has changed. A lot has changed, a lot has transitioned for me. Um, I've taken on a new role. I serve now full-time in ministry. Um, and be flawed and free. Shout out to my spiritual mom, Apostle T. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing full time now. I serve as an executive assistant and her armor bearer. And so, um, Needless to say, I be busy, okay? I be busy, I be busy. And busy, not like, whatever. I just I just be occupied, okay? We have things going on. And so that's kind of why I've taken such a step back off of social media. And also too, like I said, I was going through my healing and my deliverance process. So that when God, and God had really shut me down on social media. God stripped me away from a lot of things, a lot of friends, um, a lot of people, relationships, um, my business. Um, Many of you may, some of you may or may not know that I had a boutique, Lexi Lou, that was my, I ain't gonna say my pride and joy, I was gonna say that, but I really, really like was putting a lot into Lexi Lou and really desiring to see um, God really, really move in that, but he had me shut that down. Like when I tell you God stripped me of everything just to focus solely on him and growing and just um, nurturing my relationship with him. And of course, I'm still in that space of growing and walking with Christ, but compared to where I was last year, it's a whole new me boo and i love it over this way and so yeah um that's kind of that on that so that's a brief synopsis of where i've been as the lord leaves i would definitely be back posting more frequently um i do feel like a pull to post and begin to pour out more and begin to speak more and so that's why we're here okay so that's where i've been y'all that's where i've been 
And so going back to the next question that I was talking about is when is the ministry getting started? And to be honest, um, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I do want to say though that um, the Lord has led me to create and start and found a new business, um, a new business endeavor modest maven which is something that he was honestly telling me to do when i launched lacy lou and i kind of moved in disobedience because i really have been running from styling but i was running from styling because i didn't understand um what got what got and how god wanted to use me with personal styling and it's it's more than just clothes it's more than just you know giving you a cute look the lord has given me a mandate to really um, allow your beauty shine from in like the internal beauty shine without shine on the outside and so um yeah I don't know why I'm acting like I'm a little nervous to be on this camera this is weird this is not really me um okay anyway but yeah so the Lord has given me a mandate to um help women and men because men can be modest as well but it's not even like, I don't want people to hear the name modest and just like, be like, eh. like, just stay with me. But the Lord has given me a mandate to help um, creatives and pioneers really uh, discover and define their authentic style identity. And so that's gonna be um, something that I'm doing in Modest Maven. I'm gonna do that through personal styling, wardrobe styling, and also image consulting. And so that will be launching pretty, pretty soon. And honestly that, and I said all that to say that that will be my form of ministry because the Lord has given me a grace um, in the fashion and the beauty um, industry. And so that's where where he wants me to pour of course he has me doing in the future other things and other facets of ministry and stuff like that but as of right now that's kind of how the lord is leading me and guiding me in ministry um like i said i also do serve in ministry and flawed and free and so until the lord tells me to do otherwise i'm going to be doing modest maven doing flawed and free and Preferably when my husband come, we can come together and do ministry together, boo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, that's, anyway. Okay, so, um, the next question that I received is, how to identify the signs and the times? And I'm going to answer this from a perspective of not how to identify the times and the signs in the world. Because I feel like they kind of can go hand in hand, to be honest. But I'm going to um, answer from a perspective of how to identify the times and the signs in your life. Um, and so um, I want to share with y'all something that I picked up and learned from my apostle. And that is to go to God and ask him. Well, first and foremost, go to God. <laughs> That's that, like go to God and he will lead you and guide you as to where he currently has you and what kind of season you're in um, and things like that. And so, but something that I picked up from my apostle and that was like a really good question that made me kind of go sit and talk to God and be like, okay, well, where am I in this? Is she asked us to figure out where we were in terms of whether we were in Babylon, Egypt, in the wilderness or leaving any of those areas like so we could be in the middle we could be in one season enter into the next place and if we were in the wilderness like leaving the wilderness of course we were entering into the promised land and so um that really kind of like made me be like hmm well god where am i and for babylon uh i, I wish i had my journal i'm, I'm kidding come on so oh, thank you holy spirit i flip right to it so the question was, am I coming out of Egypt, Babylon, or the wilderness? So Egypt was deliverance. So of course, the children of Israel, um, when they were in Egypt, they were needing deliverance from Egypt and Pharaoh and things like that. So Egypt is the space and a place of you actually receiving your deliverance and things like that. And then Babylon is a place of rebuilding new systems and trusting God and building new systems. And so um, coming out of the worldly mindsets, coming out of the systems of the world, because you got to understand that we are kingdom ambassadors. We are not from this dimension and because we're not from this dimension we don't need to have this dimension system and um ideals um leading us although we do obey the law of the land we still are under a even 
a law that's even superior to the, this law. And so with Babylon, you're in the space of coming into your kingdom identity, um, rebuilding those systems and those structures and things like that. And then the wilderness is waiting on the Lord to inherit and dispossess your Canaan slash promised land. And so, um, so yeah, I ain't gonna read the rest of like, it was kind of personal after that when she gave me. But like when she asked me that, I was like, hmm, that's really, really good. And so I also like employ you all to like ask God the same thing when it comes to figuring out where you are and how to identify the times and the signs and things like that. For one, first and foremost, always go to God. Go to God and ask him to show you um, where am I, God? Where am I? And um, what is it that you're trying to show me in this season that can prepare me for where you're taking me? And then after you go to him asking him that type of question, ask him, am I coming out of Egypt, Babylon, or the wilderness? And then find accompanying scriptures that can back up um, what I just shared with you. And then also just like to further confirm his word um, and what he's speaking to you. So I pray that helps. Um... And then, so that was kind of deep. So let's go to something a little bit fun. Another question. And so the next question is, what are some hobbies you like to do? And then, in quotations or parentheses, that put fun stuff. And so honestly, this is a really good question too for me because it like causes me to really think about Alexis what do you like to do which is another thing that I have been like discovering um as as I've been in this space of like just quiet time with God and just like isolation but I really love to sew I love to sew it's very very therapeutic for me um that's like something I would like I could do that every day it's time consuming so that's why I don't do it every day. But I really do like to sew. I like the, um, I like the aspect of creating something literally out of nothing. I like doing that, and then it looks good, and then I'm like, ah, I made it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how God be when He look at us. He be like, ah, look at my creation. You know, who I made in my image and in my likeness. You know what I'm saying? And so I like to sew. Um, I like to um watch youtube really i'm a very introverted extrovert so i like like simple things i like to chill like i like just chilling like i like just chilling i don't know that's kind of a really hard question to me and i'm also still discovering what i like to do um like um, being on this side of the table of course i like to do fun things i like to um go on adventures i like to try new things i like very spontaneous things um so I wouldn't mind like um, like skydiving. I've been indoor skydiving. I haven't been skydiving out of an actual plane though. Um, I wouldn't mind like um, like what's that thing called zip lining. I wouldn't mind doing that. I like riding go karts and four wheelers and things like that. I like to swim. I like to dance. Um, I like to sing. I can't sing, but I like to. You know. Um, I used to like to really drive. Like. Something on my bucket list that I really want to do is go to a NASCAR event. And I would love to just like probably ride passenger seat. I may want, I don't know, because they go really fast, like really, really fast. I don't know if I want to go that fast, like in my, like myself, you know? I may just want to be in a car, in a vehicle while they going fast. <laughs> but yeah, so I like that. And, um, yeah, I'm really still discovering what I like to do, though, to be honest. And that's something that God was really working on me with um, because I'm going to kind of need to know. Like, you know, not just when I start dating. Well, not even dating because I'm going to get into that. But when I start my courtship process into my marriage, I don't want, like, my, I don't want to just go with the flow. And that's kind of been me in the past. Like, I was just a go with the flow type of girl. Um, but I'm learning now to be clear about my intentions and what I like to do and what I don't like to do and what I don't want to do and things like that. And so, yeah, I like to shop. <laughs> I, like to, I like to put on nice clothes. Like, fun for me is like self-care stuff too. So like getting dressed, I don't really wear much makeup and so, well, I don't really wear makeup unless I have to. And so like getting dressed, like skincare, facials, um, body scrubs, like face masks, um, 
putting on lotion, putting on perfume, like just putting on something cute and chill. Like, that's fun to me. <laughs> I know that's weird, well that's fun to me. Something I really don't like to do is getting my nails done. I like for my nails to be done, but I don't like the process of getting them done. Am I, is that, is that weird? Like, am I the only one? I don't, I don't, I bet I'm not the only one. And so, that's that on that. And then the next question is, will you ever move from Dallas? And baby, if you leave it up to a sis, I will probably say no. Um, and that's only because I really, really love it here. And I didn't think that I would. I, Alexis, in the flesh, you know, I wanted to live in Georgia. My plans were after college, moved to Atlanta, I was gonna meet somebody and I was gonna be rich and famous. And that was literally my mindset. And God quickly humbled me. I was only in Georgia for six months and then God moved me here and I've been here two and a half years. <laughs> That's crazy. And so, um, I definitely think, well, no, I definitely know that Dallas, Texas is my promised land. And so, unless the Lord leads me after, you know, I get married, leads my husband and I to go elsewhere then I love to have vacation homes in other places. Like, I definitely want to have a vacation home in my hometown of Alabama, in Tuscaloosa. And I wouldn't mind having, like, a vacation home in, like, Chicago. I really like Chicago. And in Atlanta, too. Because, you know, your girl going to have a big bang for the kingdom. But home would probably definitely be Dallas. I see myself having a family here and raising my kids here. Especially in the Texas school system. Like, the Texas ISD is top tier. Okay? So, yeah. And so then the next question is, what are your next moves? <laughs> and it's funny, like, what are your next moves? Um, I was thinking about that TikTok where um, it was like a Kodak Black song or something like that, I think. Y'all, I don't be knowing the songs and stuff no more. But it was like a Kodak Black song where um, basically you was never letting a person know your next move. New AP, flood. Water on my butt like a tub. They got my little gun in the club. Don't worry about me, I'm a thug. And that's literally what I was thinking about right now because don't let your right hand know what your left hand doing on sand. So, you know, just stay tuned for that. But for real, for real, what's coming, what I've already released um, is Modest Maven. And so that's really kind of just what I'm working on right now um, as the Lord leads me. Um, it's, de it's definitely open. So if you need a stylist, boo, hit me up. I will be more than happy um, to assist you in your styling endeavors. Or you can even contact me for consulting and we can discuss further your needs. Um, I do have a discovery call link. I'll put that in my um, bio or whatever, or the description or whatever. But yeah, so I'm not gonna speak too much on the next moves because you just gonna see, you just gonna see, you just gonna see, okay? And so that's that on that. So the next question is, how do you handle bad days? Okay, so this is a really, really, really good question because I think that a lot of times um, when you're a new convert in Christ, I think you have such a high in God and you be so on fire for him and things like that, that you feel like that high is going to last forever and that like, you know, you kind of get to a space where you like, I got King Jesus, as long as I got him, I'm good. And you are in Jesus name, period. However, we are still flesh, okay? And things still happen. And once that high wears off and you like are having to still make that decision to still follow Christ every day and still walk with him every day, like, it be getting hard out here. I ain't gonna even lie to you. So honestly, how I've learned to handle bad days is by going to God and this thing right here. My journal, my journal and my iPad, my journal and my iPad, and my phone sometimes. My journal and my iPad, I write in my iPad. I'm a writer, like I really, really like, think that I sometimes can um, effectively um, communicate what I'm trying to say better in writing. And so, especially when I'm talking to God, like I still, of course, pray aloud, right? But sometimes I like to just write to God. And so a lot of times um, when I'm having bad days, I go to him and I write about it. Um, I write it all out and that release, I don't know what it is about just that release to God. Like, it's like, I literally feel the like heaviness and the burdens being lifted off my shoulders. Y'all, I cannot make this up. And so for me, 
um what really really helps me on bad days is just giving it to god and understanding that like what i'm facing and what i'm going through it doesn't surprise him like nothing comes to god as a surprise literally nothing comes to him as a surprise he sees all and he knows all um and I sometimes think, I just heard this, I sometimes, um, I know this, I'm not gonna say I sometimes think, God sometimes uses bad days to develop character, right? And so he wants to see if you're still going to um, choose to follow him and choose to um, obey him and not you know, blaspheme him or the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of your bad days, even in the midst of your trials, even in the midst of your tribulations, are you still going to praise him? Like literally praise him in the good and the bad, right? Because even think about Job, when Job was being tempted and the enemy was boot bobbing him upside the head, Job still never went against God. And so like God wants, God was good in his character. Like he was good in his character. We all know at the end, like everything was returned back to Job, like pressed down, shaking together, one and over. <laughs> but you know, like, Job was going through a series of bad days. Like, he, my man couldn't catch a break, you know what I'm saying? And, but in that his character was developed and like, also God allowed that to happen too. So yeah, that's a whole, we ain't gonna have five of day, but that's a whole nother thing. So I sometimes feel like God allows the bad days to happen to develop character. And so it's how you handle and conduct yourself on the bad days. Um, that really gets you through it. Understand that like bad days not gonna be always like literally weep a man endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. And so, and that's not to get like super, super spiritual about it, but in this space I'm in, I'm really understanding like we are spiritual beings, right? And so we're spiritual beings in a fleshly body. So for me, it's really sometimes kind of difficult. Like I can still chop it up with you having natural conversations, right? But it's sometimes difficult for me to speak about things just in a natural perspective because I see things so spiritually. Like I understand that like, of course everything isn't demonic, everything isn't the enemy, right? Things like that, but Cause I just, I literally just said that God will sometimes allow things to happen just to build your character. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I was trying not to get super, super like spiritual on y'all, but this is me. This is me, honestly. This is Alexis Dominique 2.0. So you either gonna like it or you gonna love it. And if you don't, God bless you. God bless you. You know, but, um, but yeah, so that's that. Oh, okay. So the next thing is five interesting facts about me. Okay, so five interesting facts about me um, is that I'm left-handed, right? I'm left-handed. Um, I'm the baby of my family, so I'm the youngest sibling. I have an older brother and sister. My brother is actually 17 years older than me, so that's technically um, three facts. Um, I was able to travel abroad to Paris um, my going into my junior year of college no going into my senior year yeah going into my senior year of college I was able to travel abroad for free okay like I didn't pay a dime for the actual trip only thing I paid for was my passport $150 think about like $147 so $150 like that's all I paid for um this family this not family this uh husband and wife said that they heard my story and that they wanted, they wanted to sponsor my trip to Paris. Until this day, I don't know what story they heard. I didn't go before no committee. I didn't go before no nobody. And I can give y'all a story time about that uh, in another video, because that was definitely like a, an experience. But yeah, so I was able to go to Paris for free um, for study abroad trip for four weeks, um, going into my senior year of undergrad. And Coretta Scott King is my cousin. Um, she is my great grandmother's niece. And so that's another fact. So that's five facts about me. And then um, dating as a Christian, my take. And I'm gonna try not to get lengthy with this y'all cause this can honestly be a whole separate video for real, for real. But for me dating as a Christian, I'm gonna just keep it a band with y'all and keep it real simple, real cute. I don't date. I don't date. I'm not the gal that's on um, dating sites. I'm not. 
for me, I don't personally date. I don't date. I'm not the one that's on dating sites. I'm not doing all of that. And it's simply because um, I date with intention. So we're dating. Um, if God has allowed us to connect on that level, then it's my um, belief that we will be getting married. And so until God like gives me the green light to date and allow a gentleman to pursue me, I'm not just out here dating willy nilly. And so I'm not on dating sites. I don't go like looking out for a spouse. I don't do that. Um, and I keep things very platonic when guys do like DM me, talking about ministry and stuff, just because I am in the season of waiting on my kingdom spouse. And because um, I'm pretty confident that the Lord will tell me who to and to not connect with. And so for that, I'm not just, just out here in these streets. And so I haven't dated anyone in over two years, which is crazy to me because I was the person that always had a boo, always was in a relationship for something. I literally have only had two relationships in my life and the first one was six years and the other one was like, I forget how many months, but even in like in the middle of that, like when I wasn't in an actual physical relationship, I was talking to somebody. I was always, I'm a lover girl, right? And so I love relationships. I don't like, I'm not gonna say I don't like to be by myself because I, I actually do. <laughs> I really do love to be by myself. But when it comes to like dating type thing, um, I'm not the girl that's gonna be talking to multiple dudes at one time. And so, yeah. And so long story short, you know, I ain't never seen nowhere in the Bible where they were talking. And it, and it ain't even just for me to just be like so old the Bible say it is, right? But God don't talk about dating. He talks about them seeing somebody or them meeting somebody and then why they minding their business, doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, you know, Ruth was in the, doing what she was doing. Adam was doing what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like these people in the Bible, uh, Isaac, he's told somebody who exactly, he told somebody, go get my wife, like, this is what she's gonna be doing, like, and when he went to go get her, this woman of God was doing what she was supposed to be doing, so it was like, they, they came together and they knew each other, you know, they knew, and then they was married. It wasn't no, oh, let me finish a date, boom, boom, boom. Even like, you know, even going back to the Bible, when Jesus saw the woman at the well, he was like, yeah, you got five husbands and ain't none of them yours, like, right? Like, them ain't your, and the man you with ain't yours, you know? So it's like, dating to me, I don't wanna say it's not biblical, cause I'm not trying to get like super like, biblical on y'all but for me and be a bible thumper i don't want to be a bible thumper be like thumping it upside your head but for me in my journey and my walk with god he has not told me to um date casually right if when i date it will be a courtship and with the intention of us getting married and so until then you know i'm just out here serving the Lord. I'm out here going through deliverance, healing, walking out my relationship with God, preparing, right? And preparing, I think so many times women, um, and men maybe, but I know for me as a woman and just like talking to other sisters in Christ, a lot of times we feel like preparing means like physical preparation. But most times it's like internal stuff. Like you need deliverance before you come together with your spouse. So you're not bringing in any baggage from your past. And that's not to even say that you need to be completely whole because i personally do feel like the man of god the lord allows um us to be with as women when we get married and us as women when the man comes for us um that we hold special keys that will unlock another level of healing for those people that we will become one with and so um yeah, I don't date, y'all. <laughs> I know I said that like a thousand times already, but I don't date. I'm literally just letting the Lord do his thing. And when he bring my boo, you know, it's gonna be on and cracking. But until then, I'm really content with that. And it took me a while to get here because in a season, in a season before, um, like, like 2020, like early 2021, I was really like, well, yeah, but like, now I've just grown to understand that 
it says he who finds. And so when it's time, I will be found. And I was going through a season two where I felt very hidden, very isolated. Like I was like, God, ain't nobody even checking for me no more. Ain't nobody looking for me. But I remember a sister in Christ shared with me. She was like, you gotta understand that, um, that God says that, sorry y'all. But a sister in Christ shared with me, she was like, you gotta understand that the Lord says that you're more precious than rubies. And because you're more precious than a ruby, you gotta think about it like, you have to, you have to, like rubies aren't something you can just go in a store and just be like, oh, I want their ruby right there. No, like you have to search for that. You have to find that. And so when she showed me that, I was like, you know what, that's a really good perspective because, um, you know, we do as women and men, but as women, I can speak for a woman's perspective. As women, we, we desire to be desired, right? So we desire to have um, companionship. We desire to have um, just, you know, we just desire, we just desire. <laughs> we just desire to be desired, right? And I don't feel like it's a bad thing um, to a certain degree. Like, no, I'm not saying be out here, be like, ooh, I want everybody to want me. No, I'm not saying that, but it's like just the, yeah. It's, we I, we just desire to be desired, right? And so um, when you feel like you're not getting that um, attention or whatever, you begin to be like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, am I this, am I that? And so that's kind of like a season I was in in the past and the Lord really has to help me with that because um, like when I talked to my sister in Christ about it, she was like, girl, like that's cool because I went through that too. But it's cool because God has somebody specifically for us that's looking for us. And he may not be physically like, my on a manhunt, like to try to find me, right? But when he sees and when he knows, he will know. And so, um, I feel like I just said a mouthful. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's my take on it. I, I'm waiting patiently i'm patiently waiting and while i'm waiting i'm working i'm doing work naturally and spiritually um i'm not being idle um i do pray for my husband i pray over him and our future children over our uh union and things like that over what fruit the lord will allow us to bear i do these things so i'm not waiting idly and just being like when he come he come no i and i'm i don't like even just waiting i'm also expecting Right, because it is a promise that God has told me that it's, um, I will have and things like that and things. So, I ain't gonna get too much into that, but yeah, that's my take on it. Um, yeah, so um, the last question that I will answer is it's not really a question, well, it kind of is. And so, it says, Life after denouncing, how did you feel leading up to it? And so Like, you can go watch the whole video to hear um, my best friend and I's testimony of denouncing and things like that. But leading up to it, like, to the actual decision that I was about to really do it, um, I had got to a space where I was sick and tired of myself. And I was sick and tired of some of the things I was struggling with. Like, um, I'm gonna say some of the things I was struggling with. I was in a space where I was smoking weed really, 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 really heavy, like really bad, really a lot. They told no testimony. But I was I used I used to be on that gas. And I was tired of doing that. I was tired of being that Christian that would like get high and smoke and then be online talking about the goodness of God and praying and things like that, praying in the spirit and stuff. And so and that may not be everybody's conviction, but that was mine. I didn't want to be no fake person. I didn't want to be telling people how this and this and this and this and this is not of God and then be secretly struggling. And so I wanted to address that root before, um, well, not even before anything, but I just wanted to like, I wanted, I just wanted it to stop, right? And so I had got to a space where I was sick and tired of myself and, um, the Lord told me the help I needed was spiritual. And I told him I wanted to hate what he hates and love what he loves. And 
when I told him that I was I was very serious and that's when he started my life um, process of going through deliverance and things like that. And in the midst of that season is when it came up about denouncing. Um, I shared a whole testimony on, on the video, I'm gonna link it. But um, so leading up to it, I was just in a space of like, really wanting everything that was unlike God out of my life. But the crazy thing is, is that prior to me actually making and committing to denouncing, I already knew I was gonna end up there. And I say that because when I was, when I had first crossed back in the day, um, I remember telling my best friend, I see us making it, but I don't see anything beyond that. And we, some people that was, um, some of my former line sisters and I, and my former profiles, we had got suspended. And so I thought that's what the, the block, you know, I thought that's what it was gonna be. But the Lord was like, mm mm. And so it's like he would give me visions of like me coming to my former line sisters and telling them that I was denouncing and things like that. And I would just kind of brush off be like, no, nah, like you just make that up. But it was really Holy Spirit in me kind of preparing me that like you are gonna come out of this. And so when it kind of started like surfacing that um like come to the surface that I like the Lord was like kind of leading me out. It didn't shock me, it but it was more of a fear of how it was gonna be received because I had seen other people come out and denounce from their organizations and stuff like that, and just the backlash and the persecution that they received. Um, and I was like, God, I don't know if I'm ready for that, right? Like, I'm already trying to learn how to be bold in you, and now I'm gonna be bold and tell these folks that I'm leaving this sorority and that it's not of you, that it's demonic. How that's gonna work? And so it's crazy because I actually denounced a year before I even released that video, like well over a year before I released it. So I had been out for over a year before I even sat down and shared the testimony that I had left, which a lot of people didn't know. They thinking that it just happened. It's like, no baby, this, this, is, this has been done. And so we were literally able to minister from a place of love and healing. And so like when we posted it, of course, it, I, I don't I ain't gonna say it went viral, but like it was definitely being talked about, like and like people that knew us, people that don't, that don't even know us, like it was like really shared on Facebook a lot, like um the video my best friend posted got like a lot of views and things like that, and so um, we received a lot of backlash, um but we received twice as much um, blessings and like testimony. And like um, just people coming to us sharing how our obedience helped them, asking us how they can um, get out of their organization and things like that. And so um, me going back to saying like before, like, God, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. Like he took me through a process that prepared me to be able to be bold for him through deliverance, through inner healing. And it allowed me to understand that the, and he told me that literally after we posted the video, and I ain't gonna lie to y'all, the heat was getting hot. Like, I didn't get off social media, but I wasn't looking at like what people were saying. I saw a few crazy comments, but for the most part, I literally did not look at it. Like, my mom was calling me like, did you see? And I'm like, no, I didn't. Like, no, I didn't. Like, I, like the Lord intentionally told me not to look at stuff because I didn't need that in my spirit. And so, but, so even though the heat was getting a little hot and I, we were like, we were feeling the heaviness of, and it wasn't even the heaviness. It was like the weight of carrying, um, it was like the weight of carrying um, the persecution for Christ. And he told me that the best type of persecution is for him. And when he told me that, it's like everything, just like all the like, just worry and just everything that I felt for a brief second, cause it didn't last very long. Cause I was telling the devil where to go, right? Um, cause I understood it was the enemy trying to get to us, make us like feel like we made the wrong decision. Like, whoop, whoop, but we understand that Jesus was not well received. So why do you think that this whole black letter, black letter Greek organization 
why do you think that they finna receive what you finna say? Some people are, right? And that's why I even have prayed that those who have eyes to hear is eyes to see and ears to hear, allow them to hear and see. But um, I we under, we knew that people was finna have something to say. Like we understood that, but we also understood that we were on assignment to do the will of our father. And so um leading up to it like in the beginning part i was definitely nervous and i had talked to this woman a guy who she also denounced aka and i remember when i first had my revelation that this what i was gonna do i was googling how to denounce because it ain't on the website what you're supposed to do so i was googling how to denounce and her tweets popped up and i was like oh my gosh i follow her on instagram so i reached out to her on instagram and she was like can i call you and i was like yes please and so she asked to hear my testimony of like how I came to the revelation and I shared it with her. I was in tears and she was like, oh my gosh, you're so blown away um, and things like that. And a piece of advice she gave me was not to feel rushed to put a video out, um, to take my time and to do it as the Lord led me. And I honestly feel like that was the best advice she could have given me because, you know, when you, when you get so like amped up and you be ready to oh let me talk you you don't always minister and come out of a place of love you can come out of a place of like um sounding very condemning and that's never my motive or my intention um when i um come and share and minister even if it's like a a, a word of correction or rebuke i still even do that in love i never want anybody to feel condemned um from what i say now if you feel convicted Take it about the Holy Spirit. But I never want you to feel condemned. That's not of God. And so I was really grateful that she gave me that advice because um I didn't I didn't rush. I didn't rush. And I felt the enemy a few times trying to get me to put the video out prematurely, like trying to do it without my best friend when the Lord has specifically told us to do it together um, because we went in it together. And although we had separate processes when it came to the denouncing um, aspect of it, we still pledged together. Um, we were, that's a whole, y'all. I probably do another video just on our process. And I kind of really want to do a video with my best friend just talk about our friendship. Cause we have a very special and divine and unique friendship. Um, that the Lord has allowed us to have since the third grade but um but yeah and so when she gave me that advice like I felt the uh enemy trying to get me to release it prematurely and I'm so happy that I didn't and every time my best friend and I would try to come together to record the video it would never happen like literally she would come to Dallas so many times specifically in my okay we're gonna do the video today we're gonna do it today we're gonna do it today and we would never do it we would never do it like time would get away from us it's things would just keep coming in like coming in and like blocking it and so i honestly feel like the lord allowed it to happen when it needed to happen like it was really like a divine time and like and so that's that um in a nutshell i guess i really um i mean i feel good <laughs> i feel good i don't miss it i don't be like oh dang i'm not like that and I feel like I'm not like because I really gave it to God. And I understand things now from a more spiritual perspective. And just even with what he was showing me, because I, y'all, oh my gosh. I don't even want to retell the testimony, but like I had just forgotten about so much of what we did. Like when it came down to the rituals, the bowing down at the altar, the signing our name in the book, like just the things we were actually saying, like, none of it is of god oh my goodness it's not of him and so when he brought that all back to my memory i was like yeah i cannot willingly be a part of this stuff and just sweep that under the rug just ignore it act like it's not there because that's still me coming into an agreement with it just yeah we not even get into agreement because that's i could y'all i could really talk about the supernatural spiritual all this stuff like i could talk about it like all day because agreement is everything and like where your agreement is where your allegiance is so i could not willingly be in agreement with aka knowing it's not of my god and then proclaiming and professing to be a blood bought born again believer fire baptized holy ghost filled and all that stuff and still be over here talking about yeah i'm aka but it's the lowest thing on my priority list i don't be even doing none of that for real for real i'm not even acting with do no but you still in agreement with it spiritually and naturally, like you need to leave. But that's a 
I ain't finna get into none of that. But <laughs> yeah, y'all. So I know I just feel like I just said a mouthful. I feel like I just talked y'all's head off. But that is all I really got today for y'all. I did just want to come on here as my first little video back and give y'all a quick this wasn't quick, let me not even say quick. But I just want to come on here and give y'all um just a little life update and a QA, and a like a little bit more of an intimate, like, you know, connection and setting. I feel like more of my videos have been like vlogs. Um, and I've done like some try on hauls, things like that. But I really do feel like the Lord has shifted me in this season to do kind of more like, you know, transparent, um, educational, um, real, raw, open videos with you guys. And so leave me comments of what you would like to see now on this channel now that you kind of see the vibe you see what we're going for you see um what kind of content i'm going to be producing if you've been following me for a minute you probably even feel like i like sound different and not like my voice is different but like what i'm sharing the way i'm speaking is different because i'm really not who i once was but i keep my like instagram and my pictures and my videos i keep those up so people can like come with me on my journey so like you see where i came from and things like that and so um yeah y'all that's all i got um make sure you like comment share subscribe tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend that it's time boo and it's your internet homegirl alexis dominique and we is signing out <laughs> I don't even know if I like that ending. You know, I don't think it's going out. So make sure y'all follow me on Instagram at alexis.dominate to eat at the end. Make sure you follow me on TikTok. Um, what's my name on TikTok? I'm about to pull it up real quick. Um, oh, Alexis Dominique as well. So this is my tick. Can you see? Is it gonna focus? That's my TikTok. Yeah, I don't have that many followers on there. So I'm trying to grow. Like, I want to go live and stuff on TikTok. So I need y'all to follow me. Follow me on TikTok. So that's me. And, um, yeah, that's all I got, y'all. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Your girl is marked and she is destined. Period. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. I'm her, I'm she, I'm she, she's me, you feel me, GP. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. Blessed to be a blessing, ain't no crying, no more stressing. I'm her.